In 2021, Facebook's reputation was rocked by allegations made by a former employee turned whistleblower. Francis Haugen claimed Facebook knew it was causing harm to society, but still prioritised profits over people. She said Instagram was even more dangerous. The question now, has Meta, the company that owns both Facebook and Instagram, even tried to make the platform safer? I've been speaking to Dex Hunter Torek of the Oversight Board, which tries to keep Meta and its boss, Mark Zuckerberg, in check. Dex, thanks for coming on the show. Great to be here. Um, first of all, can we talk about you and your background? Um, can you give our viewers an idea of, of which big companies you've worked at and what you're doing now? Uh, sure. I mean, I started my career at the UN, actually, as a policy guy, and uh, I made the transition over to working in Silicon Valley. Um, after a couple of years in a very large, impenetrable bureaucracy, uh, I thought I want to go uh, work with folks who are trying to change the world and maybe do it in a little uh, faster paced way. So I ended up at Google. Uh, after that, I was at Facebook. And then I went to work for Elon Musk at SpaceX. And uh, I've been in communications and public policy uh, for about 15 years. And I'm now at a body called the Oversight Board, which is a, a independent body that was originally created by Meta in 2020. And we operate as an independent watchdog, essentially, which looks at some of the controversial content issues on Facebook and Instagram. So Meta owns Facebook and it owns Instagram, two of the world's biggest uh, platforms. What sort of oversight do you perform? What do you actually do? Yeah, so uh, there are billions of people using Facebook and Instagram. And every day, uh, a lot of people are seeing their content moderated by the company. So you may post something that's then taken down by the company. Um, you may see something on the platform which you want to see removed and which you think yeah. violates the rules, which might harm users. These are issues which you can appeal to the company. But if you don't get satisfaction from Meta, you can then appeal them to the oversight board. And an independent body, uh, a set of members, we've got 23 uh, folks from around the world, they make decisions then about whether that content should be removed or restored from the platform. And we also make recommendations on how to fix Meta systems. And, and, and Dex, for many people watching this interview, especially those perhaps with children, I've got two uh, myself. One is on social media, one's a little bit too little yet to do that. There is, for some parents, a sort of feeling of helplessness about keeping your kids safe from the toxic effects of social media. Do you accept that for many people, social media has been a net negative and many of them feel utterly powerless to sort of control that environment or keep their children safe? You see that that is a problem. Absolutely. I mean, I think there are a lot of people who are very, very concerned about how to you know, protect their children online. And uh, every day, there are people facing all sorts of horrendous abuse. Of course, social media also has huge positives. Um, you know, I think we often take it for granted uh, in Western democratic countries, you know, the value that having access to speech, um, you know, being able to communicate um, in this scale can have for people. Um, but absolutely, there are problems. We've got to deal with them. Otherwise, we will lose the promise of social media. And, you, and in terms of sort of concerns, there was also uh, the issue of Donald Trump and... Uh, he's now been reinstated on Facebook and Instagram. That was Meta's decision, as under the Oversight right. Board wasn't involved in that decision. That's not that's not something that the board would get involved with. So Is we did actually right? have a role. Um, so in 2021, of course, uh, Donald Trump was suspended from Facebook and Instagram after the events of January 6. And uh, the company subsequently asked the board to decide was that suspension correct. Mm. And the board made a decision there. We actually said, although it was right that uh, President Trump had been suspended. It was an indefinite suspension, and that was wrong. It was a right. penalty that wasn't actually contained in Meta's rules. They basically invented this penalty with no criteria for when they imposed it or lifted it. So we told the company, the process you use to impose these kinds of penalties is as important as the decision. Mm. And we sent it back to the company. They subsequently imposed a two-year suspension, which um, they've right, just okay. announced is being lifted. OK. So you said, regardless of the rights of wrong of the case, you can't just be your own arbiters. You have to have a process. That's right. It's been now weeks after the Jan 6 House Committee report concluded that, that Trump directed, encouraged and supported an attempt to overthrow American democracy. Meta, though, then concluded after this two-year time um, threshold that the risks to public safety have diminished when it comes to Trump. And that's just as he launches a new bid for presidency. You had nothing to say about this as the board, why? 
So from the board side, we don't want to speak about this currently because we may end up jeopardizing a future decision if this comes back to the board. So this is actually for us a question of remaining neutral and impartial before we potentially have to deal with this in the future. So what's the trigger for a further suspension? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be if there's a future grievous breach of the rules that are designed to protect users on the platform. The House report includes more than 50 references to Facebook highlighting how his, Trump and his followers spread false claims, shared them, encouraged people to head to DC to stop the steal and used often Facebook, you'll know this, to do it. How troubled are the oversight board about the House accusing Facebook and other social media companies of amplifying lies and radicalising, that's to quote, quote the House report, the House of Representatives report, uh, radicalising consumers? Uh, we are absolutely concerned about that. And actually, the board has previously uh, told the company that they should commit to an independent investigation of any role that uh, the company's platforms may have played in amplifying that kind of content. We, of course, said it was right to suspend uh, mm. Donald Trump in 2021. So this is something that we're going to continue focusing on very, very carefully. And what did they say when you recommended an independent investigation? They actually didn't commit to that, but they did commit to talking to external researchers and working with them. To be controlled about it, it's quite toothless, isn't it? If you recommend an independent investigation into what happened because it was potentially egregious breach of, of rules with, with profound consequences, and then Meta just ignore you. I mean, it makes you a bit of a toothless board, doesn't it? I don't think so. I mean, the board... You see, you see the point, I right? think you could absolutely make that argument, but I, I don't think it's quite right. There's, a, there's another sort of layer to this because the whistleblower, Francis uh, Hogan, came forward in 21 with a troubling account of what happened around Jan the Switch. She said... Facebook understood the danger of the 2020 election, turned on safety systems to reduce misinformation, which they called civic integrity, and as soon as the election was over, turned them back off or changed the setting back to what they were before to prioritise what she described as growth over safety. And that was the environment in which Facebook played a key role in the events of Jan the 6th. That's quite a betrayal of democracy, isn't it? Uh, I think you could absolutely make that argument. So Francis Haugen, uh, I think she had a very important role to play in demanding transparency from the company. Uh, from the board side, we spoke to Frances Haugen a couple of times. Um, we certainly found um, the insights she provided incredibly helpful, and it actually guided how we investigated the company. Just to come on to something else, it's not just about sort of democracy and politics. If we come on to children, uh, to quote Frances again, she also talked about the price being paid potentially by young people. And she brought to light internal studies from inside Meta that revealed that 13.5% of teen girls say Instagram makes thoughts of suicide worse, and 17% of teen girls that say Instagram makes eating disorders worse. That's, that's unacceptable, isn't it? Absolutely. And this is an area which the company should absolutely be committing to work much more closely with researchers. It's something which regulators and governments also need to be taking a firm stand on. So what, what would you like to see, Dex? I mean, you're an expert in this field. What do you think they could do to actually affect change? Because I'm sure people watching this with teenagers like my own think, well, what could the companies actually do to, to make this a more positive environment for their young people who you can't get off these websites, to be honest. You can't get them off the social media sites yep. even if you want to, yeah? Sure. Unless you put them in a cave. Yep. Just lock them up, take away all their technology. Well, there's a concept that we have been talking about in the tech industry and in conversations with policymakers for many years around the concept of media literacy and how people should actually be navigating through online spaces which present all sorts of harms. And um, certainly, I have never seen any example anywhere in the world of effective media literacy programs being rolled out at scale. It's something where, frankly, governments need to you know, up their game as well. But it's something where companies should be made to commit resources to. Um, it's a dangerous new world out there. We need to raise young people to be prepared to navigate these spaces. Hogan sums up. She says Facebook's realised that if they change the algorithm to be safe for people will spend less time on the site, they'll click on less ads they'll make less money. Is that, is that right? I'm not sure that's true. Um, you know, actually, uh, when you have environments which are harmful to people, which promote polarisation, which promote harms, um, lots of people will get disengaged. Mm. Consumers aren't blind to this stuff. Um, and just, just, just to finish off on, on this and some of the stuff that, that Francis Haugen said, um, there was the case of Molly Russell, which you will know, 
she consumed content on sites including Instagram that focused on self-harm and suicide. She took her own life at the age of 14. How troubled were you by that, being in this space and the ill effects it had on this particular young person? Uh, I don't think anybody with a conscience or a soul could not be uh, troubled by this. It was obviously something that revealed uh, a terribly evil uh, type of content out there and also a failure of the systems that were used by uh, the company there. So it's absolutely something which I think should be a wake-up call uh, to governments as well as the tech industry on why we need to move faster. And, and Dex, what, did the te what have the tech in industry done about it? So I understand one of the big things in the online safety bill is actually outlawing the, an entire content of self-harm uh, content. It's also something where we understand Meta has put mm. in new restrictions as well and they've beefed up enforcement there. But I think the proof's gonna be in the pudding. Does it actually mm. uh, stop young people self-harming? Does it remove that content? And would you like to see media literacy in the, perhaps not in the online harms bill, but mm. would you like to see that legislated for? I would, absolutely. It's something that I think should be an urgent priority for us. And of course, we know the next generation of technology, tools like AI, things like the metaverse, they're going to present all sorts of you, new issues as well. Would you be in for technology companies funding those sorts of programmes? I think if your business model relies on uh, connecting a lot of consumers and you're making a lot of money from that, you have an obligation to invest in the uh, protections for those users as well. So you could, you wouldn't, you, you could see a sort of a specific tax for something like that? Potentially. I think it's something we should certainly investigate. Just on keeping young people safe, I have to bring up Andrew Tate, his violent misogyny finding its way onto computers and phones of boys across the world. I have a teenage boy. He and all of his friends seem to know about Andrew Tate. I don't know mm. how it has somehow uh, gone into the consciousness of, of these young men, but it has. It has. Meta maintain a ban on him, but your former boss, Elon Musk, has allowed Tate uh, to spread his poison on Twitter. You know Musk. Is he fit to run a social media platform? I think we'll have to wait and see how Twitter evolves over the coming months and years. Um, certainly, I think lots of people, including myself, are very, very concerned at some of the unpredictable changes that have happened to the platform. Dex, you've, you've worked for Elon Musk, you know him well. You've worked for Mark Zuckerberg, you know him well. Do you think Elon Musk as a character is someone that should have a, a huge social media platform? I mean, he's somebody who obviously feels very passionate about freedom of expression. At the same time, he's somebody who's got his own very strong point of view. And uh, social media is, if nothing else, about uh, managing very diverse communities with a lot of interests. Would you urge Elon Musk to take Tate off Twitter? I would, yes. So you think he should take Tate off Twitter? And, and what about other companies such as Facebook and Instagram? Should they be doing more to stop the sharing of Tate material on their platforms? Yeah, I mean, um, there is content that is incredibly harmful. I think we need to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. But certainly where there is a record, there's a track record well built up of incredibly harmful things being applied to a whole generation of people, um, we need to take action. We can't just be uh, talking about it. What, why would you like to see him taken off, though, Tate? I mean, it's... Uh, exactly as you pointed out, Beth, uh, there's a, a person here who has been spreading incredibly uh, terrible, misogynistic, harmful content to lots of people. Um, and these are the sorts of online harms that I think uh, there is a very strong consensus in society, uh, including with policymakers and the tech industry, that we need to take more action on. So you think it should be joined up with government and the companies? Policymakers absolutely need to work with the tech industry. Uh, these are uh, problems that we can't simply ask the tech industry to solve on their own. We need leadership as well from politicians. Dex, thank you so much um, for giving me your time. It was a very fascinating conversation. I appreciate it. Thanks, Beth. Thank you.